I'll just yeah. do like three, two, one, bang, and then. Um, yeah, I just need to think of how I'm gonna use words in my head. Um, That's all the side. What's up, Jake? It's guys here. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up, Jake? This is YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's do it. What's up, guys? This is Jake from Still Athletic. We have a very special guest with us today. We have Victoria Dennis, otherwise known as Vicky D from Athletes Uncensored. And, you know, as an added bonus, she's our cousin. So it's even better. So we're going to keep it within the family. Not only are you playing, you're doing a lot of entertainment media stuff, and you're running a whole YouTube channel. So you're kind of doing a little bit of everything. So kind of talk to us about your YouTube channel, what you do, and just, just you know, what, what you do on a daily basis with that. Yeah. So my YouTube channel is called Athletes Uncensored. It was the product of a the quarantine. It's yeah. a quarantine baby project. Um, quarantine. <laughs> quarantine, yeah. Exactly. So my little brother, who's not so little, he's 6'11". Um, Can we just say he's 7 feet tall? <laughs> I'm so tired of saying 6'11". The dude's enormous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, I'm going to put a picture of him, like, right here, of the, of the Instagram <laughs> yeah. picture of me standing next to him. Like, I'm 6'2". I'm not... A small human being, but I look like you know <laughs> Ryan Seacrest next to him, where he's just like five seven, <laughs> shack holding yeah, a coke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, go yeah. ahead. Um. So yes. Yeah, so he texted me one day and was like, "Hey, you should start a vlog. You're already in the medium. Um, you should do something with it. Your lifestyle, sports, beach, volleyball. But for me, I'm not really interested in making content of like what I ate." breakfast what i had for breakfast yeah. for the day you're not day, interested or... in being a celebrity you're right, more into right. it. who I doesn't have... yeah yeah right <laughs> exactly so i already work in the space of medium of uh tv and entertainment so i created this idea for athletes uncensored to interview athletes but talk nothing about their sport and all what makes them unique as an individual awesome. um yeah. yeah so we play games such as never have i ever firing <laughs> questions putting them in the hot seat I've had NFL players on there, the Tavai brothers mm -hmm. that you played at Costa with. They won a CIF championship ring there his senior year. Um, I've had... You just had a soccer player on. Yes. Yeah. Who, professional who, who soccer. And you've had uh, yeah, soccer, UFC. Yes. Yeah. I had a professional women's soccer player. She plays for the Houston Dash. Uh, her name's Cammy, Cammy Privet. <laughs> and uh, a bunch of volleyball players on there from the USA indoor national team to the beach national team and everywhere in between. So it's just kind of shining a light on athletes that they don't get asked the same questions every single time. Yeah. Cause when you're coming off of a game, it's always like, Oh, like what do you eat before you play? And like, how mm -hmm. do you prepare for this match? Like, so how did you do care. in that fourth quarter? What was, yeah. what was working for you? It's like, right. well, our defense needed more help. Da, 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 da. Yeah. We I scored got you, yeah. more points than the other team. In my view, as good as the Yankees were in the first half of this game, that's how as bad they've been now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. brilliant. Okay, I have one question about one of the people that you interviewed, and it was one of your first ones. It was the guy that was, he was, a, I, I want to say a volleyball player, I'm sure, but he had like really long blood. You know who I'm so, talking about. Okay. Yeah, Taylor that Adler. was probably one of the most entertaining interviews <laughs> I've ever watched because that guy. Oh, he's awesome. That guy is yeah, he's awesome. unbelievably. Yeah, yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah. He was yeah. so funny. Yeah. So, can you tell me a little bit more about that? interview and what was really going on because even though you cut it I mean I still had no idea what he was even trying to say in the interview so. yeah so who he's talking about his name is Taylor Avril aka Sonny he played at University of Hawaii he is a indoor middle blocker for the USA national team he's currently playing professionally in France and he's just a character and I kind of just want to start on a serious note um I know it's probably really difficult for you, but recently you had to shave your mustache. So can you just please tell the people, you know, how you're feeling, how you mentally are handling this? Oh, uh, yeah. I think uh, I was pretty distraught. He uh, beats to his own drum, and it's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, every, like, every athlete is their own character, honestly, but we never get yes. to see it because they're yeah. only asked these Basic like, questions. Basic questions. The generic but, questions. Yes, yeah. very generic questions. Um, but Sonny's hilarious. I <laughs> asked him his worst fear, and I think he said something about flushing the toilet sometimes and having it overflow, because when he was a kid, he basically... <laughs> 
made the toilet overflow to the point that it flooded the house. <laughs> when I was 12. So I was always known as the thunder pooper in our house. I don't know why, I just pooped a lot. And I still do. That says that. I feel like you need a t-shirt with that on it. Thunder poop with just little poops. Yeah. Oh. And, so, and he said that. That'll like, do it. Like it was just floating. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine, like it kind of reminds me of like the uh, like the the person with the umbrella, and just everything's like up yeah, to here. Yeah. Just, yeah. just see like a floating turd. Yeah, oh. <laughs> this oh, is fine. Yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. That's good stuff. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, that's yeah. cool. He's really funny. You can check out that interview on my page as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where where can people go? You know, everybody that's watching this video, where can they go if they want to watch some of the stuff from Athletes Uncensored? Right. So YouTube slash athletes uncensored it's all there please subscribe it helps me out and leave a comment because if you have a random crazy question i'll ask it on my show yeah we're uncensored yeah exactly well and i've just noticed that a lot of the athletes take it so well which is really cool because a lot of the time you think the athletes are just robots all the time mm -hmm. and most of them are just it's really refreshing and it's really refreshing to see just them be themselves and actually act like the way they do off the court. And right. it's, it's really nice. Yeah. Right. Because that's what we've seen as athletes yeah. with our teammates. Yeah. Like baseball. Oh, yeah. I mean, baseball see. guys at, uh, from our reference have always, you always see those probably have the, I wouldn't say the biggest personalities, but they're the biggest goofballs out of anybody because baseball is just a bunch of lads. Yeah. That's, <laughs> talk about a bunch of lads. Yeah. Those guys are, un, yeah, those are a ton of fun, but mm -hmm. it, most of the time you only get to see them being serious. And so it's really fun to just yeah. do mm -hmm. kind of just bullshittery just, yeah. and just have yeah, fun with exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. And that's basically the premise of the show is that it's very laxed. Yeah. My guests feel like we're just having a conversation in their living room. Yeah. And at the end of the interviews, they're always like, wow, like I totally forgot we were being interviewed. Yeah. Because it's just a fun game show. So, exactly. Yeah, check it out. You've had a very successful volleyball career, both at the high school level. Uh, you had your number retired at your high school. That's freaking badass. Uh, you've played at the collegiate level at UC Irvine, and now you've been playing professionally, both indoors and outdoors, for what five, six years now. Almost. How long's it been? I played in Peru right after yeah, college. I remember that. Right, yeah. So I had two seasons in South America, which was awesome. I was the only American on my team, so I had to learn Spanish very fast. <laughs> Adapt to your surroundings. Yeah. Um, so that was right after school, and I've been on the sand now for about two and a half years. So yeah, post-grad cool. life. Yeah, close so, to So kind of talk to us about going when you were in Peru. Like, Kind of talk to us about how that experience was. I know you said you had to adapt really fast. Like, Obviously... American culture is very different from South American culture. So mm -hmm. kind of just to talk to us about that experience and what you kind of pulled from, especially from as a, both a, as an athlete mm -hmm. from a professional standpoint and also just as, you know, <laughs> being in a different They're world. Human. Yeah. A human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Human. Yeah. yeah. So definitely as an athlete, um, you're there for a job. This is your full-time job. You're there to help your club slash team win, uh, the championship. Um, for me, adapting to my surroundings and the South American culture, it wasn't that big of a culture shock just because sure. I kind of grew up in a community, like a Latino community. My mom's kids growing up, she was a teacher and pr principal, um, were all like part of a Hispanic community. Um, our other half of the family, Bryce and Nina mm -hmm. and them, are Mexican. Nobody would think that we half of our family is Mexican, but they are. So we kind of grew up in that kind of community yeah. yeah 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 so it wasn't really that big of a culture shock for me to hear spanish all the time but adapting to my practice being in spanish every single day that was one thing that's um, got to be a lot yeah, of fun that's gonna yeah. Be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um at first it was just kind of like follow the leader like i'll just do whatever the girl in front of me does that. in yeah. this drill and i'll just hit the ball really hard and see yeah. what happens Legend! His teammates help him to his feet. No! So okay, so now you are work. You are not working, but you now you're playing more on the sand. Mm -hmm. So you're not as much indoor. It's more outdoor. Kind of tell us what is the biggest difference as far as making that transition from the indoor to now going full time outdoor beach. 
Right. So the biggest transition for me and I think athletes in general from going from indoor to beach is you're now in charge of your own schedule, your own training. Things are not paid for. You don't get a check every month. That's not more pool. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a toll. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you don't get a paycheck at every month like you do indoor. Um, and you're kind of, it's kind of like the Wild West. You're in charge of everything. You Okay, you're going to have to, what? <laughs> okay, the you're, Wild West? It's like the Wild West of sports and volleyball because you're now in what charge. In the Wild of- Wild West? <laughs> <laughs> What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? That's all I imagine I know, when you right? said that. Yeah, right what you in said? the wild world of sports okay. is going on here? You're going to have to define what, <laughs> yeah, what the hell you You're going to have to break that. that one down. Okay, okay. So, for example, we you make your own practice schedules. You have to find people to train with. You have to find a coach you want to work with. And then how much does that coach cost? And what tournaments do you yourself have to sign up for? It's not like, hey, get on the bus. We're going to this game. It's, okay, I have to find out, can I financially make this happen, basically. And the ongoing battle of the sport is that it's not very lucrative. So Mm. unless you're the top five teams, unless you're the top five teams, everyone has a second job in this sport. And that's to pay for travel. So that's like 10 people then. Because it's two people. Yeah, so that's 10 people. Right. So, okay. So everyone else has a second job okay and we're all trying to make it and it's kind of it's definitely a grind yeah people play the sport because we have a passion for it and we love it and we want to grow it um it's one of the top most watched sports every four years at the olympics 900 million people tune in to beach volleyball that's so cool Um, oh that's badass yeah Yeah. so so our sport is basically how do we find a way to carry over that audience and that attention right so yeah we're just well the avp okay. the avp has gotten a lot more recognition i think with yeah. even though there's six bajillion channels out there <laughs> i think the avp and just volleyball in general has gotten a lot more exposure even at the college level too i, hope, right. I feel like it's the vibe of beach volleyball it's just like the classic you know surfboards and just, just having that a beach good time mentality. yeah exactly where you, you you can just watch it. You know, everyone that's playing is mm-hmm. probably really cool to hang out with. And there's no ego. There's, I mean, I'm sure there is but in some people. But most of the time, it's just people just kind of messing right. around. Having a good guys time. being dudes. Bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just a couple of lads. Exactly. Yeah. A couple of lads. Yeah, it's the environment of it, right? Mm. That's our selling point. It's like, come watch, like, attractive people, like, half clothes. That's facts. That's drink that's beer Yeah, let's be beach. honest. That's yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. That's facts. So I come for the sport. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bully. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's a great atmosphere. Um, it's just, okay, how do we take it to the next level now as a whole? Is that from ticket sales? Like, acquiring money from ticket sales? Mm. Mm-hmm. I did a little, like, r- test run of, okay, on the 2019 tour, if the AVP sold X amount of tickets. So they published how many bodies showed up to the tournament stops, the eight tournament stops. And I did times five dollars, and it was around one point eight million dollars. Good God! Which five bucks is like? It's yeah. also, people pay more for Amazon. Yeah, like, yeah, for, yeah. It's for also Prime, an insult Netflix, to the sport yeah. to be paying that much because sports are a product of entertainment, and pe- the people are there to be entertained. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So absolutely. families will come to watch, and if you buy a ticket, you're gonna go. Now the sponsors are gonna get butts in the seats mm-hmm. yeah and, and they know who's going to be there yeah right no, exactly because you. you don't buy a ticket to the lakers and be like oh, i'm not going to go tonight like yeah. you show up if you buy a ticket yeah. right um but yeah, that's they're invested ongoing, in it now yeah. right you're invested in it now but that's an ongoing debate in our community is oh but it's a lifestyle like it's lax like bring your lawn chairs to the beach but for me i mean i see it as a business standpoint and yeah. i understand we live in the mecca hermosa manhattan beach yeah. people see these olympic athletes literally on a daily basis practicing on the sand but when we travel to seattle chicago new york even texas these fans come out in the thousands 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 and we have vip boxes selling out for hundreds maybe even like a grand people buy these boxes and they sell out i just think that it's there's a very good there's a lot of potential. There's a it lot sounds of like potential. yeah, it sounds like you see a lot of the potential that can't volleyball can be. Right, right, okay. exactly. I got you. Okay. So, do you see yourself like it once you like? 
I know you're playing professional right now, but do you see yourself still involved after you're done with volleyball? Like, do you, like, it seems like you're ready to be in the business standpoint right now. Yeah. Like in advertising, marketing and uh, ticket sales and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So besides volleyball, as I stated before, a lot of us have second jobs. I work in TV and entertainment. Um, I worked for, still work for a company called Event Host Live. We represent the top MCs and DJs in the U.S. So we work with the NFL NBA, all of that stuff. So yeah, I would love to still be involved and help take the AVP to the level that it's capable of To the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's time we take this handshake to the next level. Bro? So I want to talk about you as like a female athlete and being in the on the other side of things because we're used to playing sports as guys and it's very common for guys to be in sports but Mm -hmm. it's less common in america at least to like have a athlete go or a female athlete go from you know you've been doing it since you're what four or five yeah and then play through college and then play professionally Mm -hmm. so i want to talk about how that's affected you and how you've been able to deal with it and what it's what it's going to bring into your life later on. Yeah, definitely. So growing up in the early 2000s, there wasn't really that huge movement that we're seeing now with the USA Women's Soccer Team or the WNBA. But I think I was lucky and a little bit naive to the fact that women didn't have equal opportunity as men in sports because I'm the only girl in my family on both sides. Mm. So I grew up with my cousins and my brother and my other cousins, and it was me with you and your friends in the street playing football. It's always been, yeah, you were always the only girl. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So I was just, that was my normal. Like, oh, you you guys are doing it. Like I'm doing it. Yeah. Like I didn't really see any other. There was anything there was there nothing, really weird, was, nothing yeah. weird about it. it was yeah, yeah there really yeah. wasn't weird at all. Yeah, it's like, that's so. how I broke my tooth. Yeah, our, our next door neighbor, <laughs> yeah. she was a star softball player, and yeah. we were just throwing the ball back and forth, and she threw a ball, and it went right by my hand. It took out my whole tooth. So oh, coordinated. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Athlete. Yeah. Yeah. But, so okay. So at first, it really wasn't a big deal. Yeah. So it wasn't a big deal. Um. I mean, I started dancing when I was four, and I mm-hmm. did that for seven years. I started playing soccer when I was six, and I played all the way up until high school. I picked up volleyball in middle school. Um, and then high school, I ran track and field. Um, but I think it was more relevant when I got to college and you kind of see, you know, obviously the men's basketball team gets a little bit more love and yeah, understanding. Sure. And, a lot sure. and I understand yeah. because they do bring in the most money for athletics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, having Title IX now is a huge benefit for females Absolutely. in general. Sure. Yeah. And I mean another common thing is that the US is super saturated with male dominated sports. The NBA. Yeah. Like NFL, NFL NBA, MLB. Yeah. Yeah, all so, of that. Hockey, yeah. Um which I understand. Like I get it. We've had so many discussions yeah. about it as a family. Um but it is nice now to see females be recognized for what they can accomplish as athletes because Women, especially like girls that have kids and then come back and play, that's yeah. insane. That's ridiculous. Serena it's, Williams is yeah. yeah I don't know how. To, yeah, I don't yeah. know how the hell you can do mean, that. Yeah. She's an Walsh, absolute stud. Carrie yeah, Carrie Walsh, Walsh, same thing. She yeah, had yep. three kids and she was pregnant at an Olympics where she got a gold medal. Um, stud. Just, that's yeah. that's that. Yeah. Yeah. I have no other yeah. words. How can you stud? Not? Yeah. yeah, like bad. You have to appreciate that. Yeah, and I think something that women need to also realize is that we have to support each other in a community whether it's in the office or on the field there shouldn't just be one chair at the table like we can't be fighting each other for this one chair I mean make multiple chairs at this table there's enough opportunity to be had for everyone and instead of belittling other females help each other rise to the occasion I mean, with finance, your most majority of the time is men. And it's not, it's just yeah. interest when it comes down to And there are females in finance, don't get me wrong. I mean, there, and there's CEOs too. Yeah, I mean, the, there's the, plenty of what is the, pres- the, the, president the, of, the president of the New York Stock Exchange. Majority of the time, the interest comes from men. And so it's what we're trying to, we want to make sure we have the inclusion and get different perspectives on yeah. the like female athletics and everything like that. So, I mean, do you see it like, a difference from when you started than you did when now? I mean, do you, do you see it developing in the right way? Do you see it going back? Do you see it kind of stagnant? I mean, because mm-hmm. it hasn't been in the news because there's a lot of stuff going on now. Yes. 
do you see it going in the right direction? Do you see it kind of st getting stagnant or what do you think? No, I definitely think, um, I see it going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Um, to reiterate with the USA women's soccer team, um, I'm lucky enough to play in a sport where we have equal pay for men and women. Um, I think we're one of the very few sports that has that mm -hmm. on the AVP tour. Um, I think it's going in the right direction. Um, but just to reiterate again, the U S is just super saturated with male dominated sports and I get it. Like I totally understand why, but I think that there needs to be an opportunity for females to have this platform as well. Hmm. I mean, again, re reiterating as well with the Olympics, I mean, people are tuning in to women's gymnastics. Yeah, and the women's money's there. Beach swimming, the money's, swimming. The, swimming. Yeah, the money's there. The viewership is there. I right. mean, if you're getting, you know, thousands of people in seats, dude, like, what? what's mm -hmm. the problem? Right. And so the difference for me, it was really neat to see playing in South America was the fact that, like I said, men's soccer is number one, but women's volleyball was right under it. Yeah. But they don't have the NBA. They don't have the NFL. So yeah. that's where us being a little bit more saturated in those sports. So it worked actually in the benefit. So right, right, nice. exactly. Okay, I but I you. think women's sports are going in the right direction. Um, I think there's a movement for it now, especially. Uh, but I would like to see more on TV, like yeah. in general. I mm -hmm. know the WNBA sure. has their TV contracts, but I think that they need to put a little bit. Well, well, that's and, and that's keep moving forward. With yeah. That, basically. Well, that's like you. that's like what we were just talking about. Like, I think with how many channels are out there now. I mean, just for example, like it's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, pretty still, easy like, to like throw beach, it on like, there. like like college, like beach volleyball. Well, I think they call it sand. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's beach volleyball, not sand volleyball. Um, I'll argue with anybody with that. But anyway, like I remember, you, you can go and watch beach volleyball on mm -hmm. TV of you know whatever Pac-12 team or whatever is pulling on. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so much stuff on TV now, and I think that helps a lot too. Right. Yeah. It's just right. having. I mean, obviously, yeah, it'd be, it's awesome. We'd like to have the same, if not you know, equal, if not more, one way or the other. But like, the fact that there is so much more viewership as mm -hmm. far as whether it be cable TV or satellite, like there's mm -hmm. so much. That's what opportunities. it comes down to. Is like if you it because when people watch Carrie Watt, like people tune into her and oh, like, yeah. like, all of all, as you said, little. like if you're getting. 900 you said 900 million people mm -hmm. viewership like that's a serious serious number it that's doesn't matter black white purple doesn't green matter. male female people but like that's, to well, watch that's what i'm thinking people is that, that are the best at what they do exactly right. but and if you're getting that viewership you're bringing in money and then mm -hmm. so if you're bringing in that money there mm -hmm. there is that opportunity for growth and that's right. exactly what you see and she's a yeah. great person too i've heard yeah. nothing but well, good yeah. things I mean, about her like i heard she's an awesome person like yeah. the, I mean, no, I get it. That's yeah, awesome. but that, that's yeah, that that's always been my focus. Like, all right, cool. Like, if you are if you're getting those viewerships, then I don't mm -hmm. see a problem with it at all. Yeah, and exactly. I, and I could see that happening now, is especially with volleyball. I've noticed has been like the number one thing, like mm -hmm. for growth and women's soccer has been yeah, yeah. A, so actually, a huge, youth, huge youth volleyball for females is the largest sport in America. It's okay. I the most that. yeah most bodies large, largest sport in America for youth girls to play is indoor volleyball. Yeah. So it's growing like crazy, um, which is great to see. Yeah. Uh, the AVP is on Amazon Prime. I really? love. Yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. I did not know that. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yes. See that yeah. that's that's information. That's the marketing. Yes. That's your job. Yes. <laughs> Shall we dive in? <laughs> go for it. Yeah. No, so exhibit A. Yeah, exactly. People need to know that you're on a streaming device. Like, I've never seen billboards on the 405 for, like, AVP on Amazon Prime. Catch no. us. Mm -hmm. No, but I've seen, the, there's a pro rugby league that I can tune into because I've seen those billboards. Oh. It's just, yeah, that's a whole rabbit hole we can go down. But, but that's a me, solid point, though. It's right. just, like, the marketing and advertising of it because that's a huge aspect that doesn't happen a lot of the time it's just those, right. it's just so small attention to detail yeah you know? exactly and, and that's what your that's what your point is i got you exactly. yeah that makes sense and also like amazon it can either be the avp making these billboards or advertisements um or they have to team up with amazon to help them support yeah like, help them support mm -hmm. to show what programs they have on their show for me i also think it's very important to be on cable tv because at the end of the day when you come home from work, you turn on ESPN or Sports Center or a CBS, like anything, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, shoot, what are yeah, they? Like on? CBS Sports, NBC, yeah, like yeah, NBC. Fox, 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 yeah, Fox yeah. Sports. Yeah, so I believe they were on NBC Sports. Mm -hmm. um, we had the finals on there. 
But selfishly and from a business standpoint, I think that they need to have a contract with one of those cable TV channels um, for all of the semis and finals because when families come home from work, they turn on cable TV, whatever sports station, and it's on playing in the background, whether it's bowling that we've all saw over quarantine. No offense to bowling. <laughs> yeah. Cornhole. Cornhole's, Cornhole's big. Cornhole. Cornhole. Yeah, this would be ridiculous. Going up. What a round and what a bag by Jake Dodson. Right, you come home yeah. and you turn on the TV. So now you have eyes on your sport Darts. that didn't even yeah. knew you were a tour before. Yeah. Because they're turning on the channel to see what the channel's providing. Um, and then you get I ad revenue. Mean. Okay. Yeah, I got Absolutely. you. I so now you're getting okay. eyes on your sport that didn't know you even existed. Plus you get ad revenue from being on cable TV, which is money that you can put back into your athletes and tour stops. So I think that's the next step forward for the ABP. Yes, I know it costs to have a TV contract, but it's something that you need to invest in for the long run. If they're bringing in 900 million people, that's a lot of hello. people. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That, that's a missing. You're missing a market. You're like right. you have a. You're missing a mark that you, you could be making money right. from this. Right. That that's my point. Like that's I don't just, care who you are. And you said that's butts in the seats, or that's just total viewership. No, well, no, no, no. That's nine hundred million. People no, I mean like seats. over the course of a, a year. I I forgot. That was no, for the, the Olympics. finals. The Olympics. Yeah. Oh, so that's actual in, eyeballs. In general, for the Olympics, like people tuning in from Brazil, like yeah, all yeah. over the world. US, yeah. Well, then, all yeah. Over if you stream, even if you stream it. I mean, something like that. Right. Like, yeah. Right. And, and as you said, like getting in opportunities like the advertising on Amazon mm-hmm. Prime, like that, The it, if the organization themselves prioritizes that mm-hmm. and a- prioritizes target marketing where it's like, oh, I didn't know that was on. Mm-hmm. That's it. And as you said, like just having it on, you know, having a contract with the like a sports channel where it's like, OK, let's let's get this running where instead of bowling, it's like a finals that's going on or mm-hmm. a cup or something mm-hmm. that is a, a women's sports. Yeah. Yeah, so the question I like to ask people is just because it's a little more abstract, it's just kind of out of the box. Like, what is something that either when you were a little kid or just a piece of advice that you've been given, or if you could go back and tell your younger self that piece of advice, what would it be? So, growing up, my parents, especially my dad, would, I mean, we always hear like, never quit, but like, he really kind of instilled that in me in a sense that um, if I start something, like, you have to finish it. And so in college, I couldn't tell you how many times I was like, F this, I'm so done, whether it was, like, my freshman year. I can relate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Whether it was, like, my freshman year at UCI was probably one of the worst years, like, (laughs) of my life. Like, it was bad. Just, yeah, with teammates and whatnot. But it gradually got better. Um... I think, yeah, just basically keeping your head down and setting a goal for yourself and flashing back to, like, when you were younger, how you fell in love with the sport and why you fell in love with the sport and do it for those reasons because things will be thrown at you, controversy with your teammates, with your coaches. Um, But why did you start playing at the end of the day and what goal did you set for yourself when you were 13? And for me, that was just finishing college athletics and – if you told me I was going to play overseas after college, I would have laughed in your face. I was like, no, no, no. I'm so done with this sport. But I fell in love with it again, playing overseas. Yeah. Because it was fun again. Yeah, and I, I didn't have this, like, weight on my shoulder from, like, coaches that we Putting didn't pressure really, on yeah. 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 Right. Not, I get that. Not yeah. unnecessarily pressure because we have pressure to win overseas as well, but... Just like it, negative energy. Yeah, basically. I felt it was more about competition than it was like you have to win and you need to be good and like because or I like, say so. Yeah, 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 or like belittling, like all exactly. that kind of no, stuff. No, where it's sure. just like I'm um, a coach, listen to me, and right. I'm a tyrant kind of thing. Right, yeah. exactly. No, I got you. So my word of advice definitely for girls coming up and guys as well, um, just keep hustling. You're doing it for a reason. Um, find your passion for it, um, what you love about it and good things will happen. Yeah. I, you know, you bring like an awesome point, like how remember why you got into it. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I would say, and we, and we've talked about this before, yeah. like, like the amount of doors that open mm-hmm. yeah. just by, oh by, just from you being able to play a sport, whether it is at the college level or professional level, mm-hmm. like the amount of doors that open even while you're playing, not even like 
whenever that is down the road, like, like you're 40, like, oh, you play sport? Oh, okay, well, I, it's just like everybody knows mm-hmm. what you're capable of. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that's another thing. Remember, like, you are, like, in, you're in your own world, like, a special little world that not many people, mm-hmm. or they, they would kill to be in that situation, you right. know? And I think just always going back to, like, where the passion came from and, like, what got you into that specific situation. Right. I think that's huge. Yeah, definitely. And back, again, females supporting females. My freshman year, um, I was pretty bullied on my team. Um, I came into the program and was super excited to be there, super excited to win. And I was kind of just blindsided with nobody likes you. Why are you here? You suck. Get out of the gym. Um, and just like girls going out of their way to just treat me like shit. Yeah. And I was like, like what? Like I came here. I was like so excited to play for this program. You're my teammate. And, right. And so for me, it's really important to always support other people. And like, that's why people come up to me now and they're like, oh my God, like, you're so nice. Like, you're just always nice all the time, Victoria, like no matter (laughs) to who. And I'm like, well, yeah, because like, I know what it feels like for people to completely shit on you. And I would never go out of my way to belittle another person the way that that happened to me. Yeah, because you know how it felt. Yeah. And even like the next year, my sophomore year, my teammates were like, yeah, like, I don't know how you even dealt with that. Like, that was pretty gnarly. Like, good job. And I was like, cool. Like, <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the other ones, like, graduated or whatever. And, like, I'm now, like, best friends till this day with girls on my team and whatever. But that was the only the first year. It yeah. got better after that. But, yeah, just support one another and don't belittle each other. And you never know what someone's going through. So, sports are... Uh, there to have fun and they're there to like relieve whatever extra tension you have off of the court yeah yeah or field. It's, it's an escape yeah. it's an escape absolutely yeah. no matter what is happening outside of your life at home or school when you step down to the court or into the gym field um you're there for an hour and a half two hours or more um to really indulge in that experience and focus on you and how you can get better and yeah well, thanks for everyone for watching. We really appreciate it. Go check out her channel, Athletes Uncensored. We'll put it right in front of Jacob. And you can find her on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter? Facebook? Facebook. Facebook, okay. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. Like, subscribe, all those things. And we'll talk to you soon. Bitches.